It's one of those jobs so many kids dream of, being an animal trainer. It's even a bigger dream when that animal is a whale weighing two and a half tons. When the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago called me to be a whale trainer for the day, I jumped at the chance. I'd be crazy not to. Now this one hour experience is open to the public, but it isn't cheap. 250 bucks a person. But before I met the whales, head trainer Ken Ramirez teaches a 30 minute class of what to do and not to do. He talks about the whales and shows a brief DVD. I made sure to listen intently for fear of being eaten. I got my outfit on. I have to go in and wash my hands thoroughly in order to, uh, to touch the whales. And we headed out to a private tank away from public view, but full of chilly 55 degree water. Once in their domain, the whales swim right up to you and are ready to play. That's amazing. Isn't that really soft? Good girl, good girl. Today I'm working with Kayavak, a 10-year-old beluga born right here at the shed. She feels exactly like a giant hard-boiled egg and is extremely friendly and flirty. Give him a kiss. Oh, that's sweet. And we really find that when people have an opportunity to see an animal up close, feel the breath on their face, touch an animal, they really remember it. It makes a connection like no other. The adorable beluga whales are often called canaries like of the sea. If I give a different hand signal, she'll make squeaking sounds. Now it's time to see if my training will work. First, I tell Kayavak to jump up. So get a little closer. Okay, ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Very nicely done. A little spin. She's watching you. There she goes. Really good. Excellent. Excellent. A nod and a wave that doesn't bigger, go bigger, exactly bigger. as planned. She's gonna spin. <laughs> oh, she's gonna spin, okay. Stop, okay. Her. Stop her, all right. <laughs> she's 2,000 pounds, I'm not gonna tell her what to do. It's clear these gentle giants love human interaction. And not only do these whales take away something from our meeting, but I did too. And it's such a unique experience. We know it's one of those experiences people will remember for a lifetime. You can see all these stories and much more on our website, WNDU.com. Coming up in our next half hour, we're going to recap the top entertainment headlines of 2010. Trisha. Wow, and speaking of entertainment, I am so excited because Elmo and Grover are going to be on the show in just a little bit. I hear that. I hear that they're, that they're uh, I've seen them walking around the halls. Wow. They were in the dressing room earlier, kind of hanging out, so uh, who knows? They're going to do the weather? Is that what I hear? Well, I hope. We'll ask them, did you get their autograph or hug them or anything? Pictures? I didn't. I, I, no, I, I think I've, talk, I've talked to them a couple years ago and got a, got a photo, but they're they do not like photos. They're just very, they're above that. What? Yeah. Okay. Big, big stars. Mm. Big. Can't wait to meet them. Thanks, Joel. All right. Joel Skipper giving us the lowdown. The ringing of morning alarm clocks were replaced by the buzzing of chainsaws. As crews worked to clear storm damage early Thursday morning, Goshen resident Angie Thiessen has taken a first daylight look at her backyard, re-landscaped by Mother Nature's 80 mile per hour winds just hours earlier. Right as we were going towards the basement, we heard the big wind come through and the tree went down and we were grabbing our three kids and trucking to the basement. Angie's home suffered no damage, but the same cannot be said for this house on South 8th Street. A majority of the trees on this road have cracked in half, suffered severe damage, or have been completely uprooted, this tree creating a hole more than eight feet deep. Neighbors are positive the tornado touched down here or was a little too close. At one point on Wednesday night, residents tell me the wind was so intense, it literally peeled the roof off of this garage, snapped the power pole, brought these lines down, and threw the roof over into that tree. And then it took 8th Street and cut it into segments. And then there was one tree here, and then one tree here, there's a section, and one tree here, there's another section, and one tree down there, there's another section. While everyone here is safe and okay, some cars were smashed while this Honda was completely encased in a fallen tree. As residents assess the damage, take photos, and take it all in, they remain in high spirits. Kids got to bed a little bit late, but other than that, we're, we're up for a normal day. We have a cell phone that has some reception that we can get out to call people, but other than that, I'm not real sure what. Just clean up. <laughs> in Goshen, Joel Skipper, News Center 16. New Center 16's Joel Skipper was at the scene and has more. The dark early morning Friday sky turned orange as nearly a dozen fire departments battled a blaze at this cabinet factory at 500 West Washington in Osceola. Crews got a call around 5 a.m. of smoke coming from Atkins Woodworking. Once on scene, they were greeted by flames nearly four stories high. 
The lack of hydrants in the area caused an issue, so extra water tankers were brought in. The amount of water required to get ahead of a fire like that in an area that doesn't have fire hydrants is uh, just probably really not uh, too feasible. Not long after, the roof and walls collapsed, but that wasn't the most intense moment of the morning. We spoke just really briefly to the owner earlier. He said he did have some uh, lacquer or finishing products in there. There were some 55-gallon drums, so there were some explosions as the fire progressed. Fire and smoke were not the only dangers facing the crews. The frigid temperatures were just as brutal. Now, it's definitely not easy to stand out here for hours in the single-digit temperatures. After the firefighters come down from the aerial, they head over here. Now, this is a vehicle donated by the Salvation Army, and volunteers inside, also known as fire buffs, give the firefighters coffee, donuts, and hot chocolate. The Metropolitan Fire Associates gladly help out any way they can, especially in the winter months. It's all up to the discretion of the commander at the scene, whether he wants us or not. As crews got a handle on the blaze and things slowed down, breaks were short but cherished. The volunteers thanked crews with every cup, something they needed on a morning like this. Because of all this, the things the firefighters, policemen do, no, this is at least one small way we can help them. In Osceola, Joel Skipper, New Center 16.